One of the most important features coming to Star Citizen in the near future is the introduction of Master Modes. Master Modes is a system that aims to replace the current and, in my opinion, very bad flight model with a new and more accessible flight model. This potential change has the usual suspects within the PvP community up in arms. To those who are unfamiliar with the PvP community or those particular individuals bringing up these concerns, they may think that these are legitimate concerns and that these people are arguing in good faith against the Master Mode system. That could not be any further from the truth. And while this is not a video that's going to focus on drama or anything like that, since that's not what we do, I am going to address this because it is very important. Because this is what I like to call player versus developer. The reason for the coordinated outcry amongst the quote-unquote PvP community against Master Modes is because Master Modes is a threat to their perceived hegemony over the average players in Star Citizen. And is also a perceived threat to their self-admitted all-time favorite way to play, which is the Light Fighter, which has dominated the game for far too long. Many, many years, in fact. That is not to say that there are not legitimate concerns with certain nuances of the Master Mode system. There's a few of them, and I agree with some of them. But the idea that it needs to be reverted, or that we need to slowly creep back to what we have currently, which is what a lot of these people are advocating, is not going to solve anything. It's going to keep the game flight model bad, which is what it is right now, and it's going to defeat the entire purpose of Master Modes and what Master Modes is aiming to achieve. The idea behind Master Modes here is to make the game more accessible to players and to raise the skill floor to allow players to have a chance to compete against players who are better than them, or at least have a place to start. In its current iteration, its phase one or whatever phase this is implementation of it, Master Modes has currently achieved that. I am not a bad player. I can go into Master Modes, and I've done it, and I can compete against players who have thousands of hours in AC. And I can oftentimes shoot them down or at least go 50-50 with them. And that's me having an above average understanding of the game and being on mouse and keyboard. That makes Master Modes an initial success. It is more intuitive, the flight mechanics work, the weapons feel good, things work the way I would intuitively and instinctually think that they should work within the game. And I don't focus on realism or anything silly like that, but within the game. Understandably, if you are one of these players who has thousands of hours in AC because, you know, that's what you like to do, I guess, you're going to feel a little threatened by this. You're going to have your ego checked. And you're not going to like that. And make no mistake, ego is a very big part of the AC light fighter community. It's such a big thing, as a matter of fact, that these clowns will buy alt accounts and go on their alts to do battle royale so that they don't get filmed being shot down by their rivals. That is how ridiculous these people are. So because of that ego check, we get this outcry and we get this over-exaggeration of the negative impact that Master Modes has on the game. And it is an over-exaggeration. If you're good at the game right now in AC, you will still be good at the game when Master Modes comes out. That's not going to change. Instead of shooting players down 10 out of 10 times, you may shoot them down 7 out of 10 times, which I think is pretty acceptable if you're putting in the time. But therein lies the issue with what I just said. It's the put in the time part. If you want to get good with the current system of flight, you have to really put in the time. And I'm not talking a few hours here and there. I'm talking hundreds upon hundreds of hours in the mini game known as Arena Commander. Because that's what it is. And I would hazard to guess that the majority of the players who come into Star Citizen don't come in here to play Arena Commander. They come in here to play the PU. Because the PU, the open world, the MMO aspect of this game, the living, breathing world of it, is the selling point. Not the arena shooter aspect. If I wanted to play a competitive flight game, I'd probably go play something like War Thunder, right? I wouldn't come to Star Citizen. That's not what I envision, and I don't think that's what other people envision either when I think of Star Citizen. Under the old flight model, they would also have to seek out training from people and rely on the quote-unquote community to teach them how to play. It's a very 
unintuitive and inorganic way to learn the game. Most players aren't going to want to do that. I don't want to do that. I was blessed to have one individual whom I'm still very good friends with teach me how to play the game. And if he's listening to this video, he knows who he is. And I learned a lot from him. But that was me being lucky and, and me meeting a good person. So not everybody's going to do that. People aren't that social anymore and people aren't that proactive. And honestly, they shouldn't have to be. Playing and enjoying a game should not require you to seek out the tutelage of others as if you're applying for a vocational course. It doesn't make any sense. What you actually want are for your players to play the game and intuitively understand how things work in a game so that when they're playing it, they feel like they are making personal progress with their own skill, which will encourage them to keep playing. You have to give players a chance to understand on their own what is happening. So if they do fight a better player and they lose, they can look at it and go, well, what did I do wrong? Okay, I did X, so now I'm going to do Y. With the current flight model, that cannot be done. With Master Modes, however, you can accomplish that. I think one of the most important things that Master Modes has changed is it puts the skill in a different location. Individual pilot skill is still very important. No matter what anybody thinks or says, that's not going to change very much. But it does shift the skill away from the, the heavy weight of individual pilot skill, and now it moves it towards group coordination skill. Which is, in my opinion, a good thing because this is aiming, after all, to be an MMO game and people are going to join organizations, they're going to fly in squadrons, and they're going to want to do things together as a team. So now the skill, well again, individual pilot skill is important, I want to emphasize that. There is a much greater importance upon the team skill and the teamwork. The way Master Modes achieved this is by slowing down the speeds and making things more manageable. Because with the current system, as you probably know, there is no real teamwork. There's no quote-unquote, and, and I loathe to use the term that these clowns use, there's no real merge, right? You you kind of fly around, a guy's zipping it 1,500 you know, meters a second one way, another guy's another way. You can't keep up, and the skill to even learn that, or at least to start learning that, is very high, if not impossible. So you don't really get team fights. The try-hard sweaties enjoy that, because it allows them to do wicked sick, 1vx, I'm the hero type of fights, when in reality, in another video I did cover this, it's not really a 1v4 or a 1v3 or 5, it's just them flying really fast, nobody can keep up, the team can't keep up with the solo player, and a guy just individually, one by one, using his light fighter, kills players one by one. So in reality, it's not a true, you know, 1vx scenario, as they like to say, but it's really just a series of sequential 1v1s. The reason why these individuals do not want the game to shift from individual pilot skill over to teamwork skill is that that is something that's a lot more difficult to learn. And not everybody can do that. You might be the best pilot in the game, but perhaps your social skills are lacking and your organizational skills are not up to snuff. And somebody who is not as good at you at the game is able to organize 5 or 10 or 15 or more people a lot better. And they're going to attack you, and they're going to kill you, and they're going to kill your small group if you have one. So they don't like that. So the argument comes from their vested interest in their personal brand. And it's also done to guard their ego. Which, again, real quick, is completely not an issue, because they're still going to be good when Master Boats comes out. Like I said, they might just kill people 7 out of 10 times instead of 10 out of 10 times. The common issue they bring up, and this does tie into what we just said, is they bring up the speed. They say it feels too slow when you're traveling at SCM speed. It feels slow because, one, you're used to the higher speeds in the game at the moment, but also, you're usually flying in space. And in space, you don't really have anything to give you an idea of how fast you're actually going. You're still going pretty fast, but you're now going at a more manageable speed, in a more close to believable speed in terms of gameplay. So speed's not really an issue. I, going any higher, we're going to get back to the issue where we have desync, we have hit reg issues, shields detaching from the hulls. I don't think, and I'm no expert on the game engine, but I don't think the game 
can tolerate the speeds very well when it comes to gameplay, and I think that's also why we have this. I would hate to see the speeds increased because that's once again creeping back to where we are, and it's getting too close to what we're trying to get away from with Master Boats, in my opinion. Another common complaint that I get from these people is that everything feels like a DPS race. Well, that's a very silly way of putting it because, I mean, isn't that what everything is? You just shoot the person until they're dead. At the surface, that's what most people are going to do and what they understand. But what I think that they're trying to say is that they feel like it's very difficult to go defensive in a fight. And to a degree, I would, I would agree with that, to a degree. The issue, there's ways to fix that. The way to fix that is not to increase the speeds or increase the maneuverability of the ships. That's just going to change nothing and, once again, bring us back to where we are now, which is not a good place. You could change that by adjusting the way weapons work. You could add a cone of fire to weapons. The cone of fire would be quite bad the further you are away, but it's better the closer you get, so this encourages you to get closer for more of a cone of fire. You could perhaps adjust the way the ships thrust and move with the nose, so getting the nose on target's a little bit more difficult for certain ships. There's a variety of things you could do, but adjusting the speed is not the answer. And then another complaint that I've seen and I've listened to and read is that it makes light fighters pointless. It, it makes everything shift towards whoever has the bigger ship wins. Well, you know, I, I don't think so. And we don't have bigger ships in the first place. And also, it's hard for me to not be biased against light fighters because I'm absolutely sick of them. I'm sick of them, and I'm sick of the people who fly them. So I would welcome a change of bigger ships being better. But since I'm not a selfish lunatic, I do want every ship to have a role. And also, that's not what's happening here. It's, it's not going to happen. But that is a concern that is brought up. Bigger ships should absolutely have very little, if any, threat posed to them by a light fighter. As simple as that. So I don't really understand that argument. I would say that's more of people that are grasping for straws and trying to find an emotional angle to appeal to to try and get their way, because I don't think it's an issue. The next common complaint that I see is that the only thing that is going to matter are numbers. And I kind of touched on that a little bit. I don't think that's the case either. I think numbers are going to matter to a degree, as they should. I don't care. If if I am on my own, and three people jump me, and I'm in a light fighter, and they're in a light fighter, and if I can't get away and I die, oh well, good on them for getting three people to go to one place in the universe and do something coordinated. It's not a bad thing. If I have three guys and they have five guys, if I am able to coordinate my three guys, and they are better pilots, and they're able to coordinate better individually towards a goal that the team has, such as focusing down targets or being defensive while the other two operate, and the other group of five people is totally garbage at that, then there's a good chance that we're going to win or come out even. And this is the interesting thing about numbers. Numbers only matter to a degree. Once you start getting higher into the fight sizes, organizational skill becomes more important than individual skill and numbers as well. I mean that, it really does. The difference between 30 players and 40 players, or 40 players and 60 players, it's a lot smaller than you think it is. The difference between 2 players and 5 players is also a lot bigger than you think it is. So think about that little anecdote there when you're hearing these things. Master Modes is not going to make this a quote-unquote Zerg Fest where the only thing that matters are numbers. Numbers are going to finally be important, What's also going to be important is how you wield those numbers and how you fight as a team. So really that's all I would have to say about Master Modes. In general, I enjoy it, and the conclusion I have from it is it's a massive step in the right direction, and for a very low-tier implementation of the concept, it's doing pretty well. I do have a belief, again, that the ability to go defensive is a little difficult for a lot of ships right now, and I do think that the ability to get the nose on target is... Perhaps a little too easy. I, I can I can sort of agree with that, but my concern would be don't go overboard, because the weapons right now they feel good. The increased velocity feels good. They're they're fun to use, and they're satisfying to use. Try and find other ways. If 
CIG thinks it's an issue because even this, I'm, I'm pretty 50-50 on it. I'm not too sure it's an issue. But if it's deemed to be an issue, find different ways to add more defensive gameplay or flight instead of just increasing the speed, which is what these Yahoos want. They just want the speed to go back up. And they're kind of using that DPS rush, DPS race argument as a way to kind of sneak in the, uh, the speed going back up. Let's avoid that. Let's keep the speeds where they're at or close to. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I know it's a long video, but I felt like it was something worth talking about. And if you got it this far, thank you for watching.